Yeah, it's kind of bad news that it's Hello, if you're new to my channel, I'm Samantha. Having cancer forces you to make a lot of decisions. I recently had to make a big decision about my surgery, whether to get a lumpectomy or a double mastectomy. I, along with my family, friends, and doctors have made that decision, and I'll explain that more in this video. My surgery is set. Goodbye. <laughs> my surgery is set for August 26th, so it's coming up really soon. And I also have the results from my most recent PET scan and MRIs that I can also update you on. But first, the video I'm about to show you is from July 27th, the day after my last chemo treatment. I didn't know it was my last chemo treatment, but I had to stop them early. At that moment, I had not yet decided whether to do a lumpectomy or a double mastectomy, so I'm explaining why that decision was so difficult for me. If you really don't care and you just want to know the decision that I made, you can skip through that part of the video. But if you're patient enough, I really recommend you watch the entire thing because it shows my whole thought process and the struggle that I was having making the decision, and I think it really helps other people understand the kinds of things that cancer patients have to go through. It's so easy for a regular person who doesn't have cancer to say, oh, if I was in your situation, I would do blank. Because they don't have cancer, and the situation is hypothetical, and they know that. People who don't have cancer are like, well, obviously, if the unlikely event occurred that I got cancer, I would do blank, because I have to, and that's what makes sense. But really, you don't have to, and nothing makes sense. When you're actually in the situation, and it actually happens to you, you start to see how the decision becomes a million times more complicated, especially when the doctors don't even agree on what's best, which was the case for me. Anyway, I will roll the footage and then I'll be back after to let you know my final decision and my scan results. Hello, I'm Samantha. My cat is sleeping right here, if you couldn't tell. Not a stuffed animal. Yeah, see? Anyway, if you've seen some of my other videos, then you probably know that after chemotherapy, which I'm going through right now, I will have to do surgery. And I have mentioned that most doctors are recommending that I get a double mastectomy, but I haven't decided. I really just want to like go into more detail of what I am thinking right now in this current moment. I don't know when this is going to be uploaded, but I just got back from an appointment yesterday where we did an ultrasound of my left breast and the tumor was so small. The doctor said that she, it could not even have any more cancer in it. I mean, obviously she's not sure unless they like took it out and did a biopsy, but you can barely feel it and it's looking way, way, way smaller. So she said that a lumpectomy would be an option. She still is recommending that I do a double mastectomy. She has a few reasons for that. One reason is, is that I'm so young. So there's a lot of years left for this cancer to reoccur. So if I take away the breast tissue on both sides, it really reduces my risk of getting cancer again at some point in the future. Another thing is, is that I do have that genetic mutation. I have another video explaining that. Basically, it's a really rare genetic mutation and there's not that much research on it, but they think that those who have it have a higher risk of getting breast cancer. So I have that, so that's another reason why she's recommending to just get a full double mastectomy just get rid of that risk. And then the third reason is it would be hard to screen and check for things the rest of my life. For instance, if I get pregnant or something later in life, um, it would just make it harder to screen and do all the tests needed to keep making sure that there hasn't been cancer that's come back. So all of those, I would say, are really good reasons. Um, the reason against the double mastectomy that I have heard is really just why would we do this full giant surgery on her when we don't have to because the tumor is so small we can just do a lumpectomy take it out so there's like a few options that I could do a mastectomy on one side just the side with the tumor I could have just a lumpectomy on that side or I could have a full double mastectomy I could have reconstruction afterwards get implants put in or not right now I've completely eliminated some of those options and kind of narrowed it down. I've decided it doesn't really make much sense to do a mastectomy on one side because the reason for doing a mastectomy is to get rid of all the tissue because it might come back, not because 
I need to have a mastectomy on that one side, so why would I remove all the tissue on one side and not the other? I have decided I will want implants if I get a double mastectomy because the complications that come with not getting the implants just seems more annoying than having to deal with the implants themselves. By complications I mean clothes wouldn't fit anymore and a lot of attention and weird looks. <laughs> and you people can be like, oh you shouldn't care what people think. I just wouldn't want to draw that attention to myself of people wondering why I don't have breasts and people asking that, me that question for the rest of my life. So really I've come down to deciding between a lumpectomy and a double mastectomy. Here's why that decision is so difficult for me. So if I imagine a scenario where I am completely alone in life, I live in some mountain cabin up in the wilderness and don't communicate with any family or friends, I'm just living life by myself. If that were the case and I only had myself to think about, I would probably get a lumpectomy. And the reason for that would just be I wouldn't want to have to deal with having implants in my body and getting those changed out. Basically, if I don't have to, why would I get rid of my breasts? It's just such a weird thing for me to think about putting implants in my body because it's just really just something I never thought that I would do in my life. I realized that my reason for getting the implants would be like a justified reason and no one would judge me for doing that, but just the way that I am as a person, I just think that's weird. It's just kind of the way I live my life. Like, if you look at me now, I don't wear makeup for a few reasons, uh, mainly because I'm lazy and also just because this is how I look and I don't want to fake the way that I look. Not saying that people who wear makeup are like fake and whatever because you're not, if you, if you like that, you should like that. I just don't. I'm not wearing a wig or anything right now. When I lost my hair because of chemo, everyone was asking me if I wanted a wig or, and I wanted to go wig shopping and I just didn't because everybody knows that I don't have hair or the people that matter know that I don't have hair. So if I put on a wig, everyone's gonna be looking at me being like, okay, well obviously that's not her real hair. I'm not saying that people who wear wigs are dumb for doing that. I mean, if it makes you feel better, then you should absolutely, absolutely do it. It just, it just wouldn't make me feel better. I just don't like lots of things. I'm just gonna live my life as simple as possible. And that's why I thought about not having the reconstruction and that was a thought that went through my mind but again I wouldn't want the attention of people asking me all the time why I look like that. There is the, sort of that balance. I'm not wearing a wig. I do have to deal with people asking me why I don't have any hair but that's going to be temporary. Um, I'm going to get hair back after I'm done with chemo. And also everybody knows that I have cancer. Way later in life if I meet someone they're not gonna know that I have cancer and I don't need to bring that up every time that I meet someone. Okay so that's what I told you what I, I would choose if I lived alone and I didn't have anyone else to influence my decision. In reality that's not the case. I'm not going to be living alone and if I get cancer again... <laughs> my cat's sneezing. And if I get cancer again it wouldn't be that bad. I mean yeah, if I died it would be really bad, but if I got this, if I got breast cancer again, I would have to go through chemotherapy again, I'd have to do all this again, and that's just not that bad if I only have to worry about myself. But in reality, I'm not going to have to only worry about myself in life, there's other people. And those other people are only going to increase from here. If I get married and I have kids and I have like a full family that's even bigger than the family that I currently have. The hardest part about having cancer for me right now is that it affects all the people around me. So I would really like to minimize that risk of me getting cancer again because I wouldn't want it to affect all the people around me and affect my life. Right now the way that it's affecting me is that I have to miss some days of work and that's just not that big of a deal. But later in life if I get cancer again I could have a lot more responsibilities. I could have children and I would want to be there for them and not be in the hospital. And I would really really not want to put my family through this whole process again. Like I said it's not that bad for me if it's only me I have to think about, but it's not. So basically I'm thinking that it's more selfish of me to not get 
a double mastectomy. And people use the argument, they say, well, you're allowed to be selfish in this situation. It's your body and you're the one going through this and so you should be the one that makes this decision. You shouldn't worry about the people around you. And yeah, I get that, but also it makes me feel better when the people around me are at ease and don't have to see me go through cancer. So yeah, I would prefer not to have implants, but I would more prefer to not have to get cancer again because I don't want it to affect other people. So it's not fully a decision of do I want to be selfish or not selfish because being not selfish makes me feel better. And also I just have no idea what the future holds. I just don't know what's going to happen later in my life. I'm in my 20s now. There's so many things that could happen that I don't want to have cancer again because I don't want it to affect whatever is happening. This is just so complicated to explain. So that is why I keep telling people that I haven't completely fully decided. So basically it comes down to reducing my risk for getting cancer. And the way to do that is to get the double mastectomy. But the tumor is so small and I keep looking at that and thinking, I don't need to get rid of everything. I've gone through so much. I've gone through all this chemotherapy to shrink the tumor and it's actually gotten so, so small. Why would I get rid of everything when I don't have to? If I choose to get rid of my breasts, they're gone. I can't get them back. Any other decision I've made in my life so far I can go back on it. Choosing what college to go to, if I didn't like it, I could switch colleges. Choosing the job that I want to do, if I don't like it, I can quit and start again. All of those decisions are reversible, this isn't. I wouldn't say that I am attached to my breasts and I need them to make me feel good. It's just that I don't know if they would be important to me in the future. I don't know if I'd want to breastfeed or anything like that, I don't know if the, my breasts would be important to me because I haven't used them for anything. They've just been there forever and I don't really care about them. But then I keep thinking, well, what if there's something that I don't know? I wouldn't know what I'm missing out on. I do know that whatever decision I make, I'm not going to regret it. That's just not the way that I am. The decision I make is the decision that I make and that's just the way that it's supposed to be. So I am leaning towards a double mastectomy. So that was fun. I'm back, just like I promised. <laughs> when I went to doctor's appointments and we would talk about this decision, I would just want to listen to the doctors talk. I kind of wanted to gather all the information that I could so that I would be able to make the decision myself. I wanted to know why the doctors thought what they thought but I didn't want to give any of my opinions out because I didn't want those opinions to influence theirs. As you can see by the video, I was going back and forth like crazy. But also if you watch closely, you can see the emotion that comes out when I start to talk about my family and about how I don't want to get cancer again. I thought that I couldn't decide, but I had decided. I had decided double mastectomy because that's obviously the option that would have put me the most at ease based on the information that I had. You watched it, but I didn't see that until I rewatched this footage, which was two days ago after I had already made the decision. So it's probably going to come as a shock to you when I tell you that I picked lumpectomy because I did. The problem that I was having before was I didn't have all the information and I was waiting until I got some other clue, some other piece of information that would make the whole decision easier. And clearly I was leaning towards double mastectomy because that's what I thought that I was going to have to do. But I was hesitant because I didn't want to do that and I was it kind of freaked me out. So I was holding off on saying that was my final decision because I wanted to get more information even though it seemed like there wasn't any more. So I'm going to explain to you now the new information that I have and in the process I'm going to explain my scan results because it all kind of comes together and makes some sense. I say that I decided to get a lumpectomy, but really it wasn't just my decision. In fact, when this decision was made, it was made in a room with a breast surgeon, my mom, my dad, my boyfriend, and my sister. And when the decision was made, it was basically just the doctor and my mom talking back and forth until they both reached the same conclusion 
that lumpectomy was the better choice. It's kind of what I was waiting for. I was waiting for someone to tell me this is what you should decide because before it was just people telling me whichever thing you decide is going to be fine. Okay, so reasons we chose lumpectomy. The lump is really, really small now. It started out as 3.5 by 3.5 centimeters, as some of you know, but now it is super small. It's like way, 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 way smaller. It's below a centimeter. This, I can show you through these pictures of my scan. On the screen now, I have a picture of my PET scan from August and my PET scan from last March before I started chemotherapy. If you look at the scan from March, you can see that there's this big bright orange lit up spot, which is where the lump was and where the cancer was. But then if you look at the picture from August, that's completely gone. It's not there anymore. Next two pictures are kind of the same thing. It's a big orange spot, which is one of the lymph nodes that was under my arm. And in the next picture, it's gone again. Nobody was expecting it. It was a complete response by PET scan, which is what everyone is telling me. That's not to say that there isn't still cancer there. They could take out the lump and there could still be cancer there because it doesn't pick up everything. It's not a perfect scan. It picks up big things or bigger things. So everything that had lit up before on the scan, the tumor in my breast, the auxiliary lymph nodes, the internal mammary lymph nodes, and that spot on my rib um, was completely gone. It's not on the PET scan. The chemo worked super well on me. So that lump in my breast, it's small enough now to do a lumpectomy. I knew that before, but what I didn't know before was some statistics. Basically, there were some studies done and they showed that based on my type of cancer and my response to chemo, getting a mastectomy did not lower my chances of getting cancer again. The doctors also wanted to make sure that I knew that I could go get a double mastectomy later in life sometime if I wanted to. Say I got tired of having to go get scans every six months or they kept finding lumps in my breasts and they had to keep biopsying those and I got tired of that, I could just go get a mastectomy. I need to focus on killing the disease that I have right now and the future matters, but it's not as important as right now. Getting a mastectomy makes radiation harder, and that's the next step that I have after surgery. It pushes off radiation longer because the recovery time for a mastectomy is longer than a lumpectomy, and there's way more risk of infection. Radiation can also harm implants and cause infection and make you have to get the implants out, which could also delay things. And I knew this then too, but it was a smaller risk, so I didn't really take it into consideration, but there is still that risk. The actual radiation is different if you get a mastectomy than if you get a lumpectomy, because if you get a mastectomy, you're doing radiation on the chest wall, and if you do a lumpectomy, you're doing radiation on the breast, and for some reason that just makes radiation harder, just how radiation works, I guess. And it's really important for me to start radiation as fast as possible, so getting a lumpectomy will just make that happen faster. So now's a really good time to explain the results of the MRI that I had on the rib. If you don't know the story about my rib, basically, on my very first PET scan, a tiny little spot on my rib lit up a little bit, and the doctors wanted to be certain that there wasn't cancer there, so they sent me for an MRI, to look at that rib. That MRI came back and it showed stuff that was kind of abnormal. Then they sent me for a nuclear bone scan, but that nuclear bone scan came back and didn't show anything. So they were like, is this cancer here? I don't really know. It could just be like that. But okay, before picture of rib, after picture of rib. If you look at that after picture, you really do see a big bright lit up thing on that rib. And there's some lit up stuff on the rib in the before picture, but it's kind of not all in one area. The edges on the spot are just so much more defined on the second picture. So basically what they think, and they're pretty sure of it now, is that there is cancer in that rib, which means stage four breast cancer. But they think that the chemo made it so 
the cancer kind of got all pushed into one area. Really no bigger than a centimeter. It's small, but it's there. So yeah, it's kind of bad news that it's almost definitely cancer that's there that has spread. But it's also really good news because it's so much more contained, which makes it so much easier to uh, do some spot radiation on that spot because now you can just go around that spot and get it and before that first picture like there's like you don't know exactly where you're supposed to be putting the radiation I guess. I'm not a doctor so I don't do a good job explaining it. Obviously it's important that I get to radiation as quick as possible because I'm not doing chemo anymore so I'm not continuing to kill the cancer cells. I need to do the radiation to get rid of the rest of that spot on my rib and any other leftover microscopic stuff that would be in my breast and lymph nodes. So I say that the decision is for me to get a lumpectomy, but that might not be the case. I say that because how the surgery works in regards to the lump in my breast is they will take out that lump and they will biopsy it and then like a week later when they get the results of that they can see if there's cancer still in it. If there's cancer in those margins and they didn't get out all of the cancer then I will have to go in and get more taken out. So it could mean that I have to go in for another surgery and just take out more stuff in that area to get the rest of the cancer out or it could mean that I have to do a full mastectomy on that side because uh, there's just cancer kind of in spots all over the place and then it just makes more sense to do a full mastectomy because you can't just take it out. So that brings me to the results of my breast MRI. Basically with my type of cancer, invasive ductal carcinoma, there's a 10 to 20 percent chance that they're not going to get those clear margins that they want just based on how the cancer normally acts. But based on the results of my breast MRI, the surgeon said that there's an even higher chance than she thought um, that I would need to have more surgery done. So she just wanted to make that clear to us that um, that's a big possibility that could happen. We are going to go do the lumpectomy because best case scenario, that's all we have to do and everything comes back great. We can move on to the radiation, but that might not be the case. They might have to go in and do more surgery. So it could end up that I have to get a mastectomy on that side. They're recommending a single mastectomy because there's a lower risk of infection if I do it on one side rather than both sides. Yeah, so I thought I would let you guys know that. And also another thing about the surgery, just to give you more details, they do take out the lymph nodes as well. They take out the lymph nodes that look like they have cancer in them and they biopsy them and if those lymph nodes have cancer in them then they need to take out more lymph nodes. And then that could cause me to have to have drains. So that will be fun to deal with after the surgery if that happens. I will be going into the hospital on Monday morning for the sentinel node injection and then after that the surgery will start. I will be going under anesthesia, real anesthesia, and the surgery will last one and a half hours or so, and then I'll be done. It's outpatient, so I will get to go home afterwards after they check everything and make sure I'm okay. We just have to see how the surgery goes. I will be posting some surgery updates on my Instagram, and I will be making a surgery vlog, so check back on my channel and check my Instagram for those updates. That's all. Thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you liked this and check out other videos I've done. Goodbye! The original fans of My American Girl channel that are watching this video right now recognize this cat from one of my videos. If you know, you know. Ah, you got your hair all over me.